I recently ate my favorite cheeseburger. It's at a place called Burger Lords in Highland Park, Los Angeles. And I was speaking with the owner, Fred, about what makes his burger so enticing to me. And I learned all these great details about the restaurant that I would now love to share with you. Really, it was eating at Burger Lords that made me realize that the feeling of going to grab a burger and that type of meal has way more to do with the composition of the burger, where you're getting it, the feeling of eating at the place, than it has to do with what the patty is made out of. So here are six nerdy details I learned about my favorite cheeseburger. Number one, the burger is vegan. However, that is not exactly what makes it my favorite cheeseburger. I grew up vegetarian and lived off of garden burgers. I really prefer things that don't taste like meat personally, so that's what it's based off of. It's still classic, it's just the patty, essentially, but it's still meant to invoke that nostalgia, like a classic act of eating a cheeseburger. Holding it, looking at it, it's a cheeseburger. So that's what we try to recreate with this whole restaurant of feeling like a old diner with the same fast food booth, Coke in a bottle. The cheeseburger is the core, but there's the whole experience of eating here that makes it burger lords. The next nerdy detail is that the veggie patty is a two day process to make the patty. And then it's a very short period of time to complete it for service. We're taking all of the veggies, nuts, grains from a raw state to a finished patty. There's so many steps in that process to get it to that patty. We have the wrecking crew, same three guys, Jose, Fortino, and Eddie. They come in every Monday at 8 a.m. and they just go. They just start. They just, it's like off to the races. They're the only people that do that. And it's yeah. such a well-oiled machine that I love watching them make the burgers because it honestly amazes me how consistent they can get those patties. Cutting, chopping all the vegetables, portioning, throwing them on the flat top. Your entire flat top is full of vegetables. Yeah. And then when it's cooked down, it's like this much vegetables. Yeah. Measuring all the spices, adding that to the veggies, grinding garbanzo beans, cooking barley, chopping up cashews. Once each of those individual components is where we need it to be, we throw that in a big mix. It takes two days because cooking each of those components at the scale we are, where we're making a couple thousand of just the veggie patties each week, we just take it to that mix on the first day. And then on the second day, we portion each patty out, roll it in panko. And the panko is kind of helped absorb some of the moisture. And also when it's finished, it gives it like a nice crispy texture when we cook it on the grill. Press it. We bake all those patties off and help draw out the moisture and just get it to a more finished state. We used to serve beef, so in 2020 we went all vegan. That changed the whole process because we didn't sell as many veggie patties, so now that's our core thing. So we really had to figure out how to switch the production to more bulk. We're doing everything by hand. When the customer orders it, we throw a bit of oil on the grill, get it crispy on one side, get it warmed up all the way through, flip it, cheese on top, and by the time the cheese is finished melting, the patty's cooked all the way through. It's really a very slow process to make fast food. <laughs> yeah. The next nerdy detail is that there are no seats in the restaurant without a seat back, which I'm sure a lot of restaurants also share this same common attribute. But what's so interesting is that Fred made the specific choice to make the inside of the restaurant that way. The original booth was actually the first thing that we purchased for this Highland Park location. They were used. When we got to the space to see them, it has a certain warmth having used products, it has some life to it already. The rest of the restaurant design was based on that. Having a fast food restaurant, I think it's important that's comfortable. So every seat that's in the restaurant has a back. We had all these stools custom made and they spin, you know, so you're not just stuck. We spaced appropriately so you're not sitting on top of someone else. You can have your, your zone. For us, it's important that people feel comfortable whether they're here for 
10 minutes or two hours. It's really meant for restaurant hospitality that you're welcoming, that people are comfortable when they come to the, your space. When you know that this level of detailed decision-making went into a piece of the restaurant, you realize that everything is a deliberate choice, but it still evokes this feeling of casualness and warmth, which is really special. I also noticed that some of the chairs that oppose the bench seating in one part of the restaurant are the same chairs that I sat on in high school for many hours doing stuff I didn't want to do. And now I get to sit in it and eat a cheeseburger. <laughs> the next nerdy detail is actually not one that I love, but one that I hate. And that is that the restaurant used to have these specially branded cups and trays that are so reminiscent of so many fast food restaurants, but they had their great logo on it. But so many people stole them that they had to stop using them. Just don't steal. <laughs> people like souvenirs. So we're back to, we have classic red fast food trays. We use the oval orange deli stickers. It's like our reinterpretation of just a classic food service item, even though that neon is very loud. I think it's still comforting to people that they recognize that. Another detail is that the restaurant's Thousand Island sauce is actually called Two Thousand Island. And Thousand Island is what many people would refer to as burger sauce, but the restaurant makes practically all of the sauces and all of the components for all of the things themselves. When we started this, we said, we're not making anything. We're making the veggie patty, that's it. Over the years, with the rise in more vegan restaurants and plant-based options, everyone started using the same products. So now we essentially make like 90% of the food. We used to use a off-the-shelf vegan Thousand Island, then everyone used that. So we're like, okay, like we want it to taste different. We want our food to stand out. So we decided to start making Thousand Island. When we did that, we're like, what are we gonna call it? We did like an Instagram contest. Whoever comes up with the best name, we're gonna use it and gave them some prizes. And the name is? 2000 Island. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel with 2000 Island. We want it to taste familiar. The one difference is it has a little bit of chopped chilies, gives it like the brightness and just a little bit of kick to it. The next dirty detail is that the lettuce on the burger is in one folded chunk, but it used to be shredded. That's how it was when we filmed Worth It at Burger Lords. When we're putting together a burger, for us, starts with bun, good amount of sauce, whole leaf lettuce, tomato, three slices of pickles, veggie patty, cheese, diced onion, a little bit more sauce on top, and the uh, top bun. Interestingly, they still have shredded lettuce at the restaurant, which goes on the fried chicken sandwich. We call it BFC. Burger Lord's fried chicken, and it's a tofu seasoned patty, breaded, deep fried, and we have a fried chicken sandwich now. I always want to change things. Like maybe I'll have a burger somewhere else and they use shredded lettuce. I was like, oh yeah, let's do that. And then I'll have one with the whole leaf lettuce. I'm like, no, that's how it should be. It got back to the point where we use the whole leaf lettuce because it holds up better and it has a nice crunch. We still want to find texture when you bite through a whole sandwich and like how that acts. And it's also easier for us to keep consistent because you're like, okay, it's this slice of lettuce versus like someone's putting a little shredded lettuce or a big handful. The Oklahoma Smash Burger, we have a patty balled up, smash that on the grill and we take a big heap of sliced raw onions and throw that on top. So when we build that, it's very simple. Bun, garlic aioli, the burger with the onions get flipped right on top of that. A little bit more garlic aioli and top bun. What makes a delicious cheeseburger? It's just classic, that whole experience. It is different for everyone, how they interpret a burger, and that's why we're just doing our thing here for people who want an alternative, that something that is very different than what you might think a classic cheeseburger is. And how does it taste? It's delicious. It doesn't taste like beef, of course, but it's also not trying to taste like beef, but it does taste like a delicious burger. It's about the feeling of going to that place and getting that burger. If you start to consider that somebody had to sit down 
and make all of the choices to arrange it and design it that way, there's actually so much going into it. And it invokes a very specific feeling of going to grab a burger that is so good. Well, that was six nerdy details I loved learning about my favorite cheeseburger. Do you have a favorite burger? What is it about your favorite burger that makes it your favorite? Have you ever thought about that?